chapter 16. That's what we're going to look at tonight. And as Pastor Rod has been speaking, uh, the Lord has been dealing with me and um, my church back home. I've been talking to them about the divine commission. Amen. I'm saying the church is in trouble at this time because we're doing everything else. But we're really not engaging in what God has called us to do. And that basically is to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. Can you say amen? So Mark chapter 16, and I'm going to read to you from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. And everybody said, Amen. The word go is the first two words of the word gospel. The Bible says that we must go into all the world and preach the gospel. That does not we mean that we have to wait for somebody to come to us, but we need to go to them. Not wait till bed, the weather gets a little bit better, or until we have enough money, or wait until we get paid and then we will go. I don't know in this country, but in the country that I'm from, you find that a lot of young men that are stepping out, I've been preaching now for over 40 years, and a lot of young men that step out today, they always want to have a guarantee of a salary. Now, we cannot guarantee, we can guarantee you heaven, yes, if you are saved, but we cannot guarantee you a salary. The Bible says we live by faith. Can you say amen? And if we're going to go, the Bible says we must go quickly. About two weeks ago, I was uh, at the funeral of a very close friend of mine, and I've been battling with him now for a long time with this friend of mine to get him saved. And then, of course, he ended up in a, on a sick bed, and he was in hospital. And I went there, and I spoke to him again about the Lord, and finally tears started running down his cheeks. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And it was just about three, four days later, when I got a phone call and said, listen, Daniel has just died. And the day when I buried him, I said, Lord, if I had not gone to the hospital and lead him to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, he would be in hell tonight. And you see, that is how serious this thing is about going into all the world and to preach the gospel. When he said to us to go, he didn't say go and pray about it first. When the Lord gave his divine commission, when he said go, he didn't say go and think about it first. There are things today that we need to pray about. Can I get an amen there? There are things that we need to seek the face of God about. But when it comes to the divine commission, it is something that we need to do quickly. We need to go and we need to go quickly. The Bible says that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, it is life unto life and death unto death. It is either heaven or hell. If you believe and baptize, you will be saved. If you believe not, you will be damned. And this is the way we have to say it. You're going to end up in hell. If you hear the gospel, you have to make a decision either to accept it or you're going to reject it. You're either for it or you are against it. You're either in or you are out. You're either up or you are down. You cannot be neutral. 
when it comes to you accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you would understand tonight that this thing about spreading the gospel, it is serious business. It is heaven or hell. It is up or it's down. We cannot play around in this day and hour that we are living in. One of the main reasons that we have received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, I know Jude says we build up ourselves praying in the Holy Ghost. I know he's the paracletos, he's the comforter. But one of the main reasons that Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost, it is simply to empower us to be witnesses. The Bible says he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witnesses, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. The Bible records immediately after the day of Pentecost, the Lord spoke to a deacon by the name of Philip and had him translated. And, and, and of course, his mission was that he needed to go uh, to Samaria. And you know, when I read this about this deacon, just an ordinary deacon, no uh, uh, person in the fivefold ministry, I said, Lord, give me deacons that are full of faith and power, wisdom, and also the Holy Ghost. Because right there in Samaria, there was some unfinished business that needed to be taken care of. Because it was Jesus that ministered to the woman at the well, and she was from Samaria, and she came back and she said to her people, she said, come and see and meet a man that has told me everything about myself. She was changed by the power of God. And now God had to uh, touch this deacon by the name of Philip and to come, go and complete the assignment, the assignment of evangelism in evangelizing the entire city of Samaria. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. I believe today signs need to follow us. Can you say amen? We're not supposed to walk and run off the signs and wait for a certain man of God with certain gifts and abilities. We thank God for that, that God is using uh, uh, in miracles and signs and wonders. You and I that are here tonight, amen, we are supposed to be ones uh, where signs and wonders and miracles are following us all the time. Can you say amen? If you're on your work, there should be signs, wonders, and miracles that are following you. If you're in school and you are on your way to school, there should be signs and wonders and miracles that you are following you. Wherever you go, wherever you are, the people must be aware that wherever you've been, that somebody has, who is filled with the Holy Ghost has just passed by here. And I believe that is what God expects of us, signs, must follow us wherever we go, on the bus, on the train, on the airplane, in the street, signs and wonders and miracles must follow us. You know, most of the great miracles recorded in Scripture, it never happened in synagogues. It never happened in the temple. It never happened in the house of God. It's very interesting, but it all happened on the streets. The whom over the issue of blood for 12 years when she touched the hem of his garment, that was a miracle that took place on the streets. You find the man of Kadara where Jesus cast out all of those demons. Where did it happen? That happened in a cemetery. It was on the streets. The multitude that he fed, this all happened in the open air, feeding 20,000 people. All happening in the open air. The Lord spoke to me concerning my church uh, at the beginning of the year, and he said to me, listen, if you can equip my people, if you can remind my people just of basic things on who they are in Christ and the authority and the power that they have, he said to me, they will not see the miracles in this building, but they will see the miracles as they go on the streets, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, and doing signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, in my name they shall cast out devils. The Lord has given us power over all the works of the devil. Can you say amen? I said to the Lord one day, I was going through a time uh, uh, in my church, uh, and I said, Lord, the only weapon that I have, it is prayer. And then the Lord reminded me, he said to me, son, the weapons of our warfare, it is not carnal 
but it's mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Can you say amen here tonight? The Bible says we can tread on serpents and scorpions uh, and drink any deadly thing and it won't harm us. In other words, there is power in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? In my name, he says, you shall cast out devils. In my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name, you shall speak with new tongues. I remember I got saved in 1973. That's a long time ago. And my spiritual father who is still alive today. And Pastor Rod had an opportunity to meet with him. Very strong man, spiritually strong, anointed of God, full of the Holy Ghost. In 1973, when I got saved, I decided I wanted to walk with this man. And as I walked with him, I saw him casting out devils. And I was fascinated by this. And I tell you, I wasn't even three months saved. And I'll never forget, I came home that particular day, and there was a friend of mine, and I knew there was something funny about him. And I called him into, into, went into his house with him, and I took him up in the room, and I took my hands, and I laid it on him, and I said, in the name of Jesus, you devil, you come out of him. And demons came out of him. For a matter of fact, I thought about it today. He lives in Los Angeles today, and he's a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was three months saved. Three months saved because of the influence of my spiritual father. God is saying to us tonight that we need to go, and signs will follow those that believe. Not just the pastors only. I believe some pastors and some in the fivefold would want people to think they're the only ones that can perform signs and wonders. But it's not so. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In other words, if you are a believer tonight, you should be laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. You should be casting out devils in his name. Can you say amen here tonight? Hallelujah. I believe in every altar service in my church. What I usually do is I look for the members of the church, the ordinary believers to come forward and assist in laying on of hands so that they can become aware that God wants to use you and through you God can heal and through you God can cast out devils. Can you say amen? At my old church, I was sharing this with uh, Pastor Rod. Now the other day I started casting out devils and then I decided, no way. I'm going to start training the people in my church. And I trained about, what was it, about 12, 13, 14 people to cast out devils. So whenever I preach or whenever the praise and worship went on in the service and demons started manifesting, I had this 12, 13 people and they would pick you up and carry you in a room somewhere and they would cast those devils out. They weren't in the FIFO. They were just ordinary people that believe that signs and wonders and miracles will follow if, if, if they use the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? I believe today if someone is sick at home, you should not call Pastor Rod. Can I get an amen there? You should be casting out that devil yourself. You should be laying hands on that person yourself. And if there's nobody around, if you sick, lay hands on yourself. I've laid hands on myself a few times, and I recovered. Can you say amen? And I believe that is what God wants us to do in these days. Some people uh, will only accept Jesus if they see some signs and wonders and miracles. Everywhere you go, you hear Christians, uh, they're getting involved in all unnecessary things, but they're not getting involved in the things of the kingdom. You see, friend, we are supposed to be carriers of light. Can you say amen? I believe when you and I, when we walk into a dark situation, I believe the light must go on. Amen. Darkness is afraid of light. Darkness cannot stand light. Darkness has no defense against light. That's why when you accept Jesus into your life, darkness has to flee because light has come in. Wherever we go, people must, must know we are carriers of this light. We were once in darkness, but now we are in this light. The Bible says Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. And ever since that day, have you ever thought about this? He's been lighting up lives. 
But the only way that you can light up a life, you will have to go and speak to that life. You will have to go and witness to that life. He's been lighting up homes. He's been lighting up entire nations. He's been lighting up cities and communities. You see, the world has a right to see the light in us. The Bible says, let your light so shine that men might see your good works. Not your compromise. They must see your good works. Not your lukewarmness. No, they must see your good works. Then the Bible says, you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. You know, there was a time when a person was sick. They never called for the doctor first. I don't know in your country, but in my country, when a person was sick, because most times we couldn't afford doctors. And so when a person was sick, they never called the doctor first. No, they called the nearest Christian. They called the nearest Christian. Because they knew during those days, they knew that the church had power. And I said to my church a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to bring you back to the place where our church is going to be a church that whenever there is somebody sick, when there is somebody dying, when there is somebody that's demon-possessed or controlled by alcohol or drugs, they must know that there is a church in the city with people that are full of the Holy Ghost that can raise the dead and cast out devils and bring deliverance to the sick and also to the oppressed. The Bible says you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I believe in these days we need some Holy Ghost hands. Can you say amen? We need some Holy Ghost hands that when we lay hands upon people, they will recover. And I believe these are the days, the days that we are living in, not just in my nation, but in this nation as well. We need to demonstrate the gospel of Jesus Christ and lay hands upon the sick and cast out devils in Jesus' name. I believe we need to get back to the days. I don't know if you uh, can remember the days when people used to bring clothing to a service. And we used to lay hands on that clothing. And the clothing went back to the, to the person that was sick or maybe a person that was unsaved or whatever. And as they put on the clothing or put on the shoes or whatever, God would supernaturally touch them. I remember many years ago, my spiritual father, uh, he so much wanted his brother to come to church. But his brother was, was one of those wild men. And his brother wouldn't come to church. And we started with a crusade. And the Monday night, his wife, his bro the brother's uh, wife brought a pair of shoes. And we laid hands upon that shoes. And then, of course, the shoes went back. And he didn't know that his shoes went to church, even though he wasn't in church. Lo and behold, this crusade started the Monday, the Thursday night. He walked into the service with that shoes on. And guess what? That was the night he got saved. You see, these signs shall follow them that believe. Those are all things. If we cannot, if, we, if they don't personally want to get to church, why don't we just bring some clothing of theirs? Why don't we bring a pair of shoes of theirs? And just believe God and trust God that through that they will come into the church or maybe they're sick at home and they bedroom or they're in hospital. Let's have enough faith because these things work. Can you say amen? And let the power of God do, uh, do the rest. And friend, that's the book of Acts. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but the book of Acts is the only book as, that has no amen to it. That means you and I are supposed to be still writing the book of Acts. And I've made a decision that I'm going to be a part of the book of Acts. Can you say amen? Friend, going into all the world and preaching the gospel and casting out devils and laying hands upon the sick and they shall recover is a command that is given to us by Jesus. And everyone must obey that command. Everyone in the fivefold, it will be great if everybody in the fivefold obeys that command, Pastor Rod, but everybody is not. Every believer must obey this command. 
our communities, uh, 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 the way the reason it, look, uh, the, it looks the way it looks today in our nations, the reason it looks the way it does today, it is because uh, we are not obeying the divine commission. Amen. There are churches today, they feel that the only way that the church can grow, it is through the pastor. Or as you say, the pastor. It is the pastor's responsibility. Right? It is the evangelist's responsibility. No, it is us, the pastor. He will equip you. But it's the responsibility of the pew to minister to those out there and then to bring them in. And then they would then hear or also be equipped and they go back out again and they bring others in as well. It is a responsibility of every blood-washed saint of God that we go into all the world. You see, you need to understand today that now you are God's hands. You are God's feet. You are His mouth. The Bible says we are His ambassadors. God got so desperate at one time and He said to Isaiah, He said, who shall we send and who shall go for us? And Isaiah responded and He said, here am I, Lord. Send me. I believe this city, this community, this nation can once again become a nation blessed and prosperous like my nation as well if we get back to the basics again and start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and saints going out there and not putting all the responsibility upon their pastor and upon the leaders of the church, but every saint knowing that they have power, God has given them authority, and they can cast out devils, they can lay hands on the sick, and He's empowered them to be witnesses. And they go out and they spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. A young man asked me now the other day, he said, what is your desire for your church? He said to me, is it, would, you, would you like to be on TV? I said, not really. He said, would you like to have a big choir with fancy robes and, and singing and blessing the people? I said, not really, because you can have all of those things and write in your choir and right there uh, uh, people uh, 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 watching you, friend, a whole lot of people just going to hell. I said, what I would really want, I would want people that are prayer warriors, that I know two and three in the morning, I'm not the only one on my knees that are praying, but everyone on my leadership is on their knees and they're praying. And every member in my church, they're on their knees and they are praying. I said, I would want people, not a big choir, not to be on television because a lot of times that can just be a waste of time and a waste of energy. I want to have people that have a burden for souls. Amen. They must have a burden for souls. They must become soul winners. Hallelujah. And then, of course, it must be people that pursue holiness. Can you say amen? Because the Bible says without holiness, no man is going to see God. Then he said, those that believe and is baptized shall be saved. Somebody said to me, is it important for me to be baptized now that I'm saved? I said, yes, if you want to go to heaven, that's what the word says. He says you've got to be saved and baptized. Amen? Because if you're not baptized, friend, all I can say to you, you are a disobedient Christian. Amen? Because baptism is symbolic of the death and the burial and also the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It speaks of burying the old man and resurrecting the new man. I remember my mother, mother-in-law, mother she was from Jewish descent. And I remember she was something around about 77 years old. And she developed cancer. And she was very old at that time and her body was very frail. And I led her to the Lord in the house. And then she heard about baptism. We had a huge tent up in our city. And in that tent I had a big plastic pool. Big one. Took me up till here. And I remember she requested to be baptized, a little frail body. She went there that particular evening, and I baptized her, put her over the pool, and I baptized her. And today I know she's in the presence of God. 
I believe when you get saved, you must obey God. Can you say amen? And be baptized as well. God's called me to bring the church, I believe, in this day and hour in my city and in my town back to obedience. Obey him and become a witness. Obey him and begin to lay hands upon the sick. Obey him and start casting out devils. Obey him in every way possible by living a holy life. A true story is told, and I close with this, of a man one day that had an outer body experience. And it says this man was caught and taken into hell. The Lord took him into hell. And he watched everything, the, the pain and all the screaming and everything else. As we understand, the Bible says the gnashing of teeth and all of those kind of stuff. But he says he saw something very interesting. He says as he looked and he saw a certain man, he was running around and, and, and trying, trying, pulling a face and looking at this one and then going on, on the other side and checking that one out and checking that one out. This man asked Jesus, he said, man, what is that man doing? Why is he why is this almost like somebody that's looking for something, looking at everybody? And the Lord said to him, he's looking for a preacher that had told him a lie. And I said to myself, Pastor Ron, I would never, ever, ever, ever again would I hold back what God wants me to, to share with people. And I believe we need to be honest and we must be direct with people if we're going to take people to heaven. Can you say amen? And if you're not saved, you need to get saved. And if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. That's simple. There's no other way, my friend. If you're cold and lukewarm, the Bible says, the Lord says, I will spew you out of my mouth. Hallelujah. I was thinking today, we were talking, and I was thinking about those years, you know, in the 50s. Some of you can most probably remember your huge tent crusades that you had here with Oral Roberts that has now gone to be with the Lord. All in the 50s with A.A. Allen with Amy McPherson and Jack Cole and all of those people. I used to be fascinated as a young man when I read about them and listened to uh, 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 those beta uh, uh, cassettes those years, uh, listening to A.A. Allen and how he preached and how people were delivered and set free and cancer falling out of people, people getting out of wheelchairs and blind eyes popping open. And they said during those 50s was the greatest time in the nation of America. Why? It is because men and the church, men and women of God, and the church was busy with what God had called them to be busy with. I believe the heartbeat of God tonight, my brother and sister, it is soul winning. Nothing else. And it's soul winning. Hallelujah. And I thought about it today. Your pastor has a heart for evangelism. We haven't spoken about it, but I've heard him several times speaking about this. He wants to go to Uganda, and he wants to go and minister there. When, I, when he was in Ur Ur uh, Rwanda, he didn't know this, but I came to a meeting one day where uh, they were talking, some friends of Africa was at the same uh, 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 crusade up in Rwanda, and they shared now, he hasn't told you this, but I sat there that day, and the leader of this uh, uh, group or this network, he looked at me and he said to me, Eddie, your friend Rod did an awesome job in Rwanda, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, people getting saved, people getting delivered, people getting set free by the power of God. And I believe tonight is an opportunity that you can sow towards him going back to uh, Uganda. Is it Uganda you're going to, Pastor? Yeah, Uganda. It is a glorious opportunity. You might not be able to go there, but you can send him. It was this morning at about 4 o'clock when I was praying, and I was praying for Pastor Ron, and I said, Lord, will you make it possible for him to go? And the Lord said to me tonight, I must challenge you that you must sow a seed towards him going uh, to that place and preaching the gospel 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see the difference in every season in your life. It is always a person. Did you know that? Naaman needed the servant girl. And then, of course, he got healed of, your lepro of his leprosy. And your uh, finance, you might not be able to go, but you can send your pastor. Reinhard Bonke, I don't know if you heard, have you everybody heard of Reinhard Bonke yet? I believe he's going to do some crusades in your country. And I believe that's going to be awesome. And Reinhard preached in my church many years ago. I was a vice chairman of one of the biggest crusades in Africa, in South Africa when he was there. And Reinhard tells a story. He said that the Lord spoke to him and the Lord said to him, I want you to go to Nigeria. And uh, just a week before the crusade had to start, he said to the Lord, I, I'm going to Nigeria, but where's the finance? Where is the finance? They need something, they say, like 250,000 U.S. dollars they need for an eight-day crusade in any country that they go to. And, of course, if you have a crusade in Nigeria, they cannot count the people because it's not just a couple of hundred of people or a couple of thousand. It's over a million people that attend a crusade per night. And he calls it a sea of humanity. They don't count the people anymore. They count soccer stadiums or football stadiums. And they would say, well, it's about 10 or it's about 20 football stadiums. And so they will work it out and say, well, there was a million and a half people per night. And he said, Lord, but I'm going in a week's time. Where is the money? And the Lord said to him, he said to him, man, I have spoken to 10 people already that I've blessed tremendously financially but they are disobedient. And he said, I'm busy now speaking to another 10. You see, the gospel is free. But what you need to understand, to get the gospel from one place to the other, is going to cost finance. When your pastor has a heartbeat for evangelism, he has a heartbeat uh, to go to those places and preach the gospel. And the only way that he's going to get there is by you sending him. And I believe as you send him, God will also bless the Gideon house and bless your house as well. So I want you to begin looking into your own heart. Maybe this is out of the way with you, but I just need to obey God and say it to you. The, God, the Lord spoke to me last night at about 4 o'clock. I don't know why, but he said if each one of you can maybe... If you don't have the amount today, or you don't have it on, on, on uh, let's say, uh, uh, or you can bring it on Sunday, or you can pay it off. When are you leaving, Pastor Rod? In August? But maybe if each one can just sacrificially give us 300, that's what the Lord said to me, $300. Each one of you, just sow that towards the work of God, so that your pastor can go and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might not have it tonight. You can bring it on Sunday. If you don't have it all by Sunday, maybe just slowly pay it off until August so that the man of God may go and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us just bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. If I tell you, if I, I know your pastor so well already. If I had spoken to him this afternoon and told him I was going to do this, he almost probably said to me, please don't do it. But I thought I'm going to keep it away from him because God spoke to me and God told me that this is what I needed to share with you here tonight. Well, so let's just pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity that we had, Lord, just to sit in your presence, to enjoy the preaching of your word, Father. And we pray tonight for Gideon's house, Lord, that you would bless this church that you would continue with it, Father, that this church may become a lighthouse and a place where people would be burdened for the loss, Lord, and spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, just continue with us further tonight, we pray, in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah, I'm
right on time. <laughs> God bless you, Rod. <laughs> <laughs>